Welcome back to Sports Knots NFL Conversations. And today, guess what we're going to do? We're going to rail on the Cowboys. Now, if you're a Cowboy fan, I know it won't make you happy, but you'll agree with a lot of it because nobody cares more than you guys. But we just got to say it because Jerry Jones and what's happened in Dallas and what's happened over the last few years is just pretty much ridiculous. So we're going to talk about that. By the way, I'm Scott Branson from SportsNot.com. Joining me is my good friend here, Ryan Dyerud. He is from LA Football Network, also part of the SportsNot family here. And you're watching us on the SportsNot NFL channel. Yes, we have a single channel now, just all NFL videos. We have the SportsNot channel. You can go see everything. You can go to Ryan's LA Football Network if you're into those teams, college, pros, whatever. But if you want to see NFL videos from Sports Not, which we're going to have a ton of them this year, make sure you subscribe to this channel, share it with your friends, and this is where you will find your content. Okay, Ryan, uh, as we record this, uh, we just found out recently the Cowboys, the first professional sports team to be valued at over $10 billion, according to Sportico's 2024 NFL rankings. Those were released on Tuesday. Jerry Jones um, owned this team, bought this team, in 1989 for 140 million dollars okay <laughs> in today's dollars that would be 355 million and it's worth 10 billion now he did a lot of things to make it that way if you look at this financial powerhouse that is the cowboys um they saw success in the 90s of course winning super bowls in 92 93 and 95 that was the last kind of golden age of of Dallas Cowboys football. But man, I the reason you and I connected today is we were going back and forth and just talking about NFL football and it's just like what the Cowboys. I know a lot of people love to hate the Cowboys or just one of those teams because of their history. But but Ryan, when you look at what this what, what's going on with this team, it's beautiful stadium which is a a, a sight in itself. Mm -hmm. The Cowboys just can't get it right and I believe I believe it's all Every single bit of it is on Jerry Jones. What about you? I mean, what, what's your thoughts on the on the state of the Cowboys and what they've been unable to do on the field? Yeah, it's it's wild. Scott, good to be back with you. Been a while. Um, yes. But it's it's wild because in terms of business, they're the most successful franchise in the world. Yeah. Like, so you, you got to credit that to the owner, right? Jerry Jones. Like he, he knows what he's doing in terms of branding, identity, and the people he's hired to continue that brand because they haven't been – I wouldn't say they haven't been good, but they certainly haven't been great since the nineties. I mean, it's been a long time since they've been relevant in terms of uh, playoff appearances or playoff wins and certainly Super Bowl appearances. Um, and so those, those heydays of a dynasty, if you call it, have been long gone long in the rear mirror, but they continue to grow in terms of brand and in terms of valuation. So it, it there's certainly a disconnect there between the business side of it and the football side of it. And obviously I think anyone in that organization, I don't know about anyone, obviously dollars, dollars are important for some people, but <laughs> most of them would say they care more about winning than this valuation. But yeah, I think when you have an owner that is so heavily involved and I think obviously an owner of Jerry's stature, Mr. Jones stature, I'll say has had a lot <laughs> of success in, yeah. um, in football acumen over the years. But you know, you get to a certain point when, when times have passed you by, you, you know, he's getting older in age, like Scott, we, they do training camp out here in Oxnard, right? The Rams yeah. were just with the Cowboys joint practice. They're actually doing them again this week um, in Oxnard with them. And Jerry Jones was, you know, with reporters afterwards and just hearing him talk sometimes. Like, I don't want to sound too critical, but you're like, I don't know if he's all there in terms of like <laughs> football knowledge and saying he's not, has no urgency to get CD lamb signed. And I mean, I guess when you're with your franchise were 10 billion, like the dollars don't matter too much to you, but right. it does matter in a salary cap league because if your receiver is taking 20% of your salary cap, that's going to not bode well for the, how you, how you finance the rest of the team. So excited to kind of get more into it with you, but yeah, it certainly seems to be a disconnect between the business side of this franchise and the football side. And even some of these financial decisions they make have seemingly never really panned out. You know, they made Dak Prescott the highest paid quarterback at the time. They made Ezekiel Elliott, one of the highest paid running backs at the time. You know, they paid Amari Cooper years ago. I mean, it's not like they haven't spent the money, but they obviously mm -hmm. have not allocated it correctly to, to you know, advance their their playoff push. Well, yeah, and I think, I think too, I, I want to give them credit for, for a lot of the talent you just mentioned, actually. And I know uh, he, Ezekiel's back with the Cowboys now and obviously at a different age, a different point in his career. But if you look at Jones's uh, uh, 
tendency to micromanage every bit of this. Look, I understand you're the boss. And like you said, he's done well, not to even mention the legends business that they started, which does merchandising and business deals for mm -hmm. other teams, not only in the NFL, but in other sports as well. So I give him and actually his son credit for doing that because they're a brilliant guy. That's why they call Jerry Jones the shadow commissioner, right? Because he, he has so much mm -hmm. pull. He's done so much for the league and for the Cowboys, and he should be credited for that. But what he's created with his own team is what I would argue is a completely chaotic environment. And, and his need to con constantly control every piece of the narrative. He's the GM. He's the spokesperson. Of course, he's the owner. And what it ultimately does, I think, Ryan, is it, re it, it, it turns into unnecessary drama and distraction. And I think, I think the, the Cowboys haven't – I don't think they've lost on the field, I should say in the playoffs and we know you know the, the, obviously the, the, the dubious record over the last 15 years I, I don't think they've lost on the field necessarily because of the lack of talent i think that when you have a situation that's that dysfunctional it's hard to keep things together and i think right now we're living through another one cd lamb okay cd lamb's looking for a contract extension he made it very clear and the cowboy said okay yeah we'll work on it with you and then jerry jones comes out at the beginning of camp and says yeah we're not in any hurry and cd lamb's like oh really so he says the wrong thing at the wrong time because he doesn't show he doesn't show any restraint in talking about these things. And I get it. You're a big business leader. You know, he's very uh, braggadocious when it comes to that stuff. I shouldn't say braggadocious. He's just very outspoken. Okay, I'll put yeah. it that way. And uh, gravitas. because, yeah, gravitas. There you go. And and you know what? You know, I've covered the Raiders, you know. And so Al Davis sort of had a little bit of that in a, in a kind of in a different way. He was more of a maverick. But you look at the Lamb situation, what's happened uh, over the course of this year, even, even with Dak Prescott wanting another contract, of course. So the message with him is always inconsistent. And then when it gets a negative reaction, he goes into damage control. And that's what I mean by that dysfunction. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I think the other piece to this, Scott, um, is, you know, in in the NFL, obviously, we all know, like, coaching is very important, right? And yes. You know, you can you can be a good NFL coach without full control. I think we've seen that at times. But I think that the best coaches out there, and I'm not saying full GM control. Obviously, there's a GM to do that. But the best coaches out there have full control of their roster when it's said and done. So, you know, after the GM makes their moves and that and on. So it's it, the, the, the roster construction through the draft and free agency is typically a collaboration between coach and GM and ownership obviously has some say, but once the roster is set, it's the coach's team. And that's why you hired the you coach. Think. And when you, you look at the great ones, like, you know, Rams right now with, with Les Snead and Sean McVay, Stan Kroenke stays out of their way. Just says, just, just have me write the checks. You guys do your thing. That's why I hired you. The Niners, even you could say Kyle Shanahan obviously mm -hmm. is, is the, he's the pseudo GM too. He runs everything. The The Patriots for all those years with Bill Belichick and obviously Robert Kraft was involved to an extent, but we all have all seen the documentaries. Like that was Bill's team. Like he did what he wanted. And he basically told Robert Kraft, like, no, we're doing this. <laughs> when you look at since Bill Parcells, who was probably the last strong willed coach of the Cowboys, there's been three coaches, Wade Phillips, Jason Garrett, and now Mike McCarthy. I think it's safe to say, and that's not a shot at any of these three guys as men, mm. but it's safe to say they are not in full control of their team. They're kind right. of, they coach X's and O's, they lead the operation, but above them is the one calling the shots and forcing them to make changes. And I can say from experience of covering the Chargers, when Brandon Staley, the last coach, was just here, there were a lot of instances of things he wanted done, and Tom Telesco, the GM, and above would not let him do that. And they said, nope, that's not how we run things. You got to go through this protocol. Like you're here to coach. We're here to do this. Jim Harbaugh mm -hmm. comes in town and says, I have full control or I'm not coming. <laughs> things, things, I mean, the season even started, but things to be changing. So I think that's the last piece of this with the Cowboys is yeah. Roster things and, and finances and contracts have been interesting, but they have, they, they haven't had in 20 years, a coach that has had full control of his team to make the decisions that he th sees best fit. Right. And and so much of that instability they've had there. And I say that just I say instability, because like you said, they've only had three coaches over that span since Parcells was there. But you look at it and you can understand why they've had trouble, because you never know who's in charge. And that's what happens is when you have one of the most talented rosters in the NFL 
and you consistently underperform, well, the coach gets blamed, right? And 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 I get that. You know, Jason Garrett was not considered to be the best coach there was. Was he terrible? No, he actually did pretty well if you look at how things went down. But Jones, because he's constantly meddling in the organization, what you do is you send a signal to players and coaches that their authority really isn't their authority. It's his, and it doesn't matter on what color the trash cans are or who they're signing at running back. Jerry's going to say it. And when you do that, you don't send any, any, you don't set any clear boundaries in the organization. You create alienating uh, this, this top talent on the team, top talent that you might want to go after in free agency. And because you're getting, he's getting involved from everything from contracts to play calling to player acquisitions since he's the GM. And it's like, when you have that, that just frustrates people because they're not allowed to do their job. Right. Mm -hmm. They can't just go out and you brought you brought that up just now. So this drama is exacerbated by Jones because whether whether he messes it up or he just involves himself in it, which in itself can be a problem. He rarely, rarely holds himself accountable is my point of view. He always blames others. It's the player. It's the GM or not the GM, but it's the coach. Excuse me. And, and when that happens, that's deflating to the people there in the organization because they say, oh, here we go again. And you know what? He screwed up. If he, if he came out and said, hey, you know what? Yeah, the CeeDee Lamb thing, guess what? I, I, I didn't say what I meant, and, and I apologize to CeeDee. I apologize. That's not what we mean. We want to get this taken care of. Instead, he tries to nuance it and make it seem like it wasn't a big deal. And I think that that can really affect team morale over time. And you might not see it overtly in week one, five, or nine, but then you know, just being in an environment like that wears on you, my man. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, it's funny. Did you watch the, uh, I think it was, it came out, it was a 2023 draft. Um, Roku did like a documentary mm -hmm. inside a few of the teams draft. I think it was the Cowboys. It was the Colts and Jacksonville, maybe. I can't remember the the three, three or four teams. Um, but you could just see the the total difference. And I'm not, it wasn't even that the Cowboys were, were bad. And I think they have a fine like culture and I think a good work environment, but it's like, they're all sitting at this like table and it's just kind of like Jerry Jones at the head of the table. It's like a family dinner almost. And it's like, that's how they're doing their draft <laughs> war room. And everyone's just kind of like sitting there and, you know, we don't waiting see for him to speak. Like they're, yeah. They're filming it, but they're just waiting for him to be like, all right, let's do this. How do we feel if we miss out on this guy? And then you get a couple chime in from the scouts and the position coaches. All right, let's, yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's, let's draft this guy. Just it, the process doesn't seem like it's on par with the other 31 teams at this point. Yeah, and, and it reminds me, you, you'll you'll be too young to remember this, but as a kid, watching the Yankees, I'm sure you've seen the stories, George Steinbrenner was overly involved, just like this, right? And he had his fights with Billy Martin, fired him like 18 times, whatever it was. And and then when when he always wanted to be involved, but once he drew back from that and actually just let his 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 executives do their job, the Yankees then started winning and winning more consistently. Yeah, did he over-involve himself sometimes? Sure. But he actually, as he aged, kind of got the picture and said, okay, I just want to win. And he's yeah. a typical New Yorker. He wants to win. Yeah. And so um, I, I see a lot of that in Jerry Jones, but I just don't see him relenting on any of it. And I, I, I keep hearing you know, the, the media, listen, I'm going to say it straight up, right? Because there's no sacred cows here. Uh, the media is afraid of him, right? Yeah. Nobody really goes into him. And I think a lot of times when the Cowboys underperform, Ryan, they look at, well, they didn't have this. They could have had this. They could have had this. And that's partly true. Of course, they look at the coach. Like Mike McCarthy got a lot of hell last year um, with their early exit yet again. And But nobody sits down and says, well, wait a minute. What's the one constant <laughs> over this whole time? And it's yeah. it's the owner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and again, not to just throw strays at Mike McCarthy, but like <laughs> why else would he be back as head coach unless it's because he's – an easy puppet essentially like there's no reason that he should have been back after another exit with that roster and you know i seem like especially when they had they had dan mccarthy on staff who's now the head coach of the washington commanders like he may have been a better candidate as right. as their head coach if they just promoted him and and whatnot so i mean that that tells you all i need to know if like if you continually see mediocrity but you want that control you're not going to go yeah. anywhere anytime soon well, and they do so well in the regular season. And that's the thing. And, you know, Cowboy fans are probably, you know, pissed at us right now talking like this about the team because, but I think it's a team that has talent that has to overcome its organization, i.e. its owner. 
to do that. And, and maybe they will. Maybe they can overcome all of this chicanery, all this stuff going on in the organization because of Jerry Jones uh, and still win. Maybe they will. I, I don't know. We'll see in the co coming season. But to me, the, the, for me, if I was a fan of the Cowboys, Ryan, the scariest thing for me would be I just don't see him changing or recognizing his piece in all of it. Yeah. Yeah, clearly. I mean, we haven't seen a change yet. And I mean, and we've seen the exits. It's not like they, it's not like they've been making it to the championship game or they've they've been to the Super Bowl but lost. Like I, I don't have it in front of me, but when was their last playoff win? I mean, it's been it's been a while. It's been quite some time, right? Or yeah. at least not a not just a division, a wild card win, but it's been a while. So they've been past the divisional round. It's crazy. And and I, and now you have the Dak Prescott thing. And I know I think most Cowboy fans are pretty positive about Dak Prescott. Um, the national media and national fans, I think, are kind of 50-50, excuse me, on the guy. But he's he's a good talent. And I just don't see the Cowboys letting him go. But again, you're, I yeah. mean, yeah, you got to handle CeeDee Lamb and, and you still got a year left for Dak and he wants the re the, 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 the new contract um, or he's going to hit free agency. And well, I just don't. I don't know why you have all the money in the world. Like if you're, if you are committed to him, which Jerry Jones says he is, then why won't you just get it done? Like get it out of the way. So everybody's got peace of mind. Yeah. And, and sorry not to cut you off, but oh, I mean, that's okay. it, it's a, it's a, a strategic malpractice <laughs> to let continually let other players reset the bar. And CD lamb is a good, good receiver. Do mm -hmm. I think he's the best receiver in football? Absolutely not. Everyone knows with a brain, how contracts work is regardless if you're the best, once the market's set, that's what you're aiming for. And so you're basically not going to take less. And uh, yeah, Justin Jefferson's making 35 million a year. So CD lamb is not going to take anything less than probably 32 million. And had they have signed him previously, he would have been in the twenties. Yeah. And so good for CD lamb. I mean, always great. when you see players hit the bank off these, uh, off these franchises, but malpractice for for teams that just sit around and wait and think that they can get a better deal and think that them holding out is going to bode better for them because either they're going to lose the player or they're going to make him the highest paid receiver when he's you not could argue not even top 10 right right and and to me that's that's the folly in all of this it's like you have the money but i think again it goes back to hubris it goes back to if you look at really strategic gms whether it's Howie roseman or others around the league they look, they're looking short term, they're looking long term, and they have a plan set out. It doesn't seem, I know Jerry Jones has some plan, but that plan doesn't be, doesn't seem to be one of a man who maybe grew up and understood being a GM and a player personnel. Now they've made some good hits. Micah Parsons, one of the best players in the NFL, I believe. So these guys, they hit on players. It's not that, but that overall just managing it from a player personnel perspective, taking care of contracts. I'm sure they got people in the organization who can be really good at that. It's just whether or not they allow him to do it. But it'll be interesting to see how it goes this year because you got a coach's job on the line for sure. Then you got a quarterback who may or may not sign uh, and all sorts of things going on. So it'll be interesting to watch how this Cowboys team unfolds. Any last words from you, Ryan? Well, I'll just put you on the spot. Do they win the uh, NFC East? <sighs> I don't think so. Eagles should rebound. Commanders will be better than what they yes. were. They still have a ways to go, but they're rebuilding. They'll be better though. Yes. And uh, the Giants. Giants are terrible. I think, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know much about it. Yeah. I don't so, so Giants Cowboy fans, you, you definitely have that going for you. The Giants are going to be brutal. Yeah. Um, and but, they look like their GM is a little, mm, a little yeah. shaky as well. So, <laughs> yeah, I think I think they are going to. I think the Cowboys will be right there. I really do. Uh, yeah. Barring any sort of unforeseen injury or or change in the situation. I do though, uh, but again, it's just whether or not being in that environment, having his constant meddling, Jerry Jones, that is, if they can keep it together. But it'll be it'll be fun to watch, and I'm just glad Ryan that we're another week closer to football. Oh, thank God, thank God. Here's okay. Here's the last point. Yes. I'll say. So not, to, yes. and I don't want to get too long winded. Yeah. But sometimes, and again, we we were just talking like I don't know if Jerry Jones will change. Like, will he change? Like sometimes it takes the wheels falling off to actually admit that there's a problem right like any addict will tell you or anything like that it takes like that rock bottom to say okay i have a problem and i always you know you probably get annoyed but i always bring this back to la football since that's my main coverage lincoln riley and usc lincoln riley for years has been one of the best coaches in football 
he's gotten away with having bad defenses because it didn't matter. They still made the college football playoff. He still had Heisman winners. Like, yeah, he didn't win the whole thing, but they were always a top team, always a top 25 team every single year. Last year, the wheels fell off, right? Defense, mm. 116th ranked defense. He had to fire his best friend mid-season, make all these changes. And I think that forced his hand seeing how it got that bad. And now I think USC set up, obviously, you know, it's going to be still kind of a rebuilding year, but they're set up for the future. So if the Cowboys do are right there, to your point, like winning the division or right there, make the playoffs, have an early exit, I don't think there will be a change because I think he no. said, well, we're still getting close. Like we just need a yeah. few more things. If yeah. they go five and 12, that's the only time different story. Be like, okay, now full sale changes need to happen. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that. It, it, it's interesting because as a fan of the Cowboys, I'm sure you're saying to yourself, well, you'd like things to go wrong because you'd like change. But at the same time, if you have to do that, then you're not very good. And then if you win, it continues to mask some of the issues uh, unless you can win at all. And then you don't feel bad about that at all. But uh, yeah. we'll see what happens with the Cowboys this year. But uh, Ryan, always fun to talk to you, man. And we'll do this more often. We'll get on. We'll talk about some of the hottest stories in the NFL. And we just kind of went back and forth about, man, what is going on with the Cowboys? So we appreciate it. And the Cowboy fans out there, you can drop comments below as Please well do. as make sure, yes, and make sure that you subscribe to the Sports Not NFL channel. channel. Ryan, I will see you next time, my friend. See you, brother. Appreciate it. All right. This is Scott Branson from Sports Not. Thanks for being with us. We will see you next time here on NFL Conversations.